Welcome back. Today, through the medium of creative coding with Python's Music 21 library, we will explore the intersection of number theory and music with the concept of Euclidean rhythms, an idea rooted in the work of ancient Greek mathematician Euclid, but first applied to music by researcher Godfrey Toussaint in 2005. Imagine we have two sound onsets or attacks that we want to distribute as evenly as possible across five equal units of time, which we will call time steps. We can visualize this with a simple one-dimensional grid where each subsequent square represents the next time step. Since 5 cannot be perfectly divided by 2, the distribution that comes closest to being even results in a pattern of 3 followed by 2. Similarly, with three onsets across seven time steps, a perfect division is impossible. The closest we can get to an even distribution yields a rhythm of 2 plus 3 plus 2. Where time steps are divisible by a given number of onsets, such as four onsets across eight time steps, it is reasonable to assume that a Euclidean rhythm could be expressed as equally spaced pulses. Euclidean rhythms, however, are considered cyclical. Therefore, a pattern of four onsets across eight time steps results to a single onset across two time steps, which is repeated four times. Let's consider how we can calculate a Euclidean rhythm for any given number of onsets and time steps, taking the example of five onsets across 13 time steps. First, we need to determine how many time steps to allocate to each onset. If we divide 13 time steps by 5 onsets, we get a base value of 2 with a remainder of 3. This means that each onset will receive a minimum of 2 time steps, and 3 onsets will receive an extra time step, resulting in 3 groups of 3, with 2 remaining groups of 2 time steps. Now we'll determine how to arrange these to achieve the closest to even distribution. We'll take each group in turn and compare it to the last group in the sequence. If they are different, we'll move the last group and append it to the end of the current group, thereby creating a new group with a 3 plus 2 pattern. After iterating through the sequence, we'll circle back to the first group and repeat the process of comparing each group in turn to the last group. Where they differ, we'll append the last group to the end of the current group. This process continues until the first and last groups are identical or until the entire sequence consolidates into a single group. Our final pattern reflecting the even most distribution of 5 onsets across 13 time steps is a sequence of 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2. Now let's take our understanding of Euclidean rhythms and translate it into code. In a new Python file we'll define a function called Euclidean rhythm which will take two integer arguments representing the number of onsets and time steps. It will return a list of integers to represent the corresponding Euclidean rhythm. To determine the base number of time steps that each onset must receive We'll divide time step by onsets using the floor division operator to obtain the integer part of the division, effectively discarding any remainder. We will calculate the remaining time steps to give us the number of onsets that should receive an extra time step, with remaining time steps equals time steps modulo onsets. We'll use these values to distribute the time steps among the onsets, storing the results in a variable called rhythm. Inside a list comprehension, we'll create a list containing base duration plus 1 if i is less than remaining time steps, else a list containing base duration for i in range onsets. To arrange the contents of rhythm as evenly as possible, we'll iterate until the first element of rhythm is equal to the final element. We can do this using a while loop with while rhythm index 0 not equal rhythm index 1. Within this while loop, we'll use a for loop to iterate through each list in rhythm with for group in rhythm. We'll use an if statement to check whether the current group is the same as the final group. If the current group is not equal to the final group, we'll use group plus equals rhythm.pop minus one to remove the group at the final index of rhythm and concatenate it at the end of the current group. Our function now generates a Euclidean rhythm based on user-provided arguments. Cases producing a single Euclidean rhythm, such as the previous example of four onsets across 13 time steps, will create a single nested list within rhythm. But cases that result in the repetition of a shorter Euclidean rhythm, such as four onsets across eight time steps, will create a list of lists, each subsequent list being a repetition of the first. Therefore, after completing the loop, we will retrieve the Euclidean rhythm by accessing the zero index of rhythm before returning it.
To test the function, we'll create a main function to be called at the bottom of the script. Invoking the print function, we'll call Euclidean rhythm specifying five onsets across 13 time steps and run the program to see printed to the screen a pattern of 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2. If we intend to create a Euclidean rhythm based on four onsets across eight time steps, we discover our function returns a list containing a single value of 2. Our rhythm has been reduced to a single group of two because as we mentioned, four onsets across eight time steps is a simple four times repetition of one onset across two time steps. Similarly, providing values of four and 10 results in a three two pattern because the even most distribution of four onsets across 10 time steps is three two three two, a repetition of the Euclidean rhythm built from two onsets across five time steps. We are ready to apply our function to create a notated rhythm. We'll import music 21 and in main create a variable called myRhythm to store the results of calling our Euclidean rhythm function. This time we'll specify 11 onsets and 15 time steps. Inside a new music 21 stream object, which will serve as a container for the rhythm, we'll use a list comprehension to generate a series of new note objects, setting their durations with duration.duration .duration 0 0.25 times i for i in my rhythm. The duration of each new note now corresponds to a value in Euclidean rhythm, with each value being interpreted as a multiple of a 16th note. We'll call mystream.show and run the program to see a notated representation of the rhythm. We can enhance our function to generate yet more interesting outcomes based on Euclidean rhythms. A rhythm necklace represents a rhythm visually, with time steps arranged around a circle akin to a necklace. Starting from the top of the circle, we'll arrange a Euclidean rhythm with five onsets across eight time steps, resulting in a pattern of 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. We can create variants of this rhythm by rotating it around the circle. A single rotation, for example, produces a pattern of 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2. We can rotate this rhythm four times to generate four different variants. To implement this in our function, we'll introduce a new integer argument called rotation, which which will default to zero. After we have obtained the Euclidean rhythm within our function, we'll adjust the value of rotation to be rotation modulo the length of rhythm. By using the modulo operator to calculate the remainder of rotation divided by the length of rhythm, we can specify any rotation value. This is because the modulo operator will always produce a value between zero and the length of the list. If we provide a value for rotation that exceeds the length of rhythm, it will simply correspond to more than one rotation around the circle. The rotation will be performed using the rotation variable as an index. We'll create a new list by slicing into rhythm from rotation to the end and then appending it to another slice from the beginning of rhythm up to rotation. To the end of the rhythm we created in main, we'll add a variant by once again invoking the Euclidean rhythm function with the same arguments of 11 onsets and 15 time steps, but specifying that it be rotated twice. We we'll run the program to view in notation a longer rhythm comprising our original Euclidean rhythm followed by its rotation. Having covered the theory behind these rhythms, we are well equipped to explore their creative potential. Within a composition, a Euclidean rhythm might be gradually constructed as a process, or we could combine shorter Euclidean rhythms additively to create longer rhythmic structures. Interesting results might also arise when these rhythms are played against each other, particularly when the rhythms have differing lengths. Let me know your ideas in the comments below, and please share feedback, thoughts, and suggestions for other future topics related to Python, Music 21, and creative coding. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.